There. Welcome to Tech Talk Weekly. I'm Bob from Creation Station. This is our weekly show where we talk about two to three cool news stories, something fun from the library, and get you on your way in 15 to 20 minutes each day. As always, if you have a story you want us to talk about, creationstation at broward.org comes right to us, and we'll make sure we get that in for you. Today, I've got Miss Sarah from Hollywood as my guest. How are you doing today, Sarah? Good. How are you on this overcast one of your rainy day is it i haven't yeah. seen a window for uh, i've been down here in the basement <laughs> part i haven't seen a window for a while so i guess if it's raining out there i'll find out in, a, in another half hour huh yeah, yeah oh exactly. man it is a mess out there um you brought some really cool stuff though so i want to jump into our uh browser here so we can get this with people and then do do where is come on bring it up there we go took a while that time i'm not sure why our first really scary really scary story say that five times fast <laughs> is uh the world's gonna end yeah um I, yeah isn't this kind of it, it, this is not the thing that we think about as no. this is what's going to doom us all but oh. then so the lead story for for the gloom and doom today, everybody, is uh, Russia launched a satellite a while ago, um, and then they just used it to blow up another satellite earlier this week, mm -hmm. which is a bad thing um, <laughs> for well, lots. <laughs> yeah, for lots of reasons. Uh, even last week, we talked about this on the show. China had one out there to test, like, capturing stuff and to mm -hmm. follow along and do things. And then now Russia's out there blowing things up, yeah. which is a big problem because of uh, – Did you, you saw the, the part there about the space station having to shut down? Yes, they all had to get, like, in the emergency pods and things just in case something happened. Yeah, and it's just it, – and it's be only because of Russia just trying to – uh, Yeah, to blow things up, to prove that they can mm -hmm. be just as whatever. Um, yeah. So we've got a couple of, couple of links for you in the stories here about um, what it's really like um, and how much stuff is up there. Mm -hmm. And what this all brings up to us is it is something that is called let me go down and get the exact i want to make sure we're getting it here the kessler syndrome here it is it's on the screen here now for you mm -hmm. so kessler syndrome is where things start smashing into each other yeah. and breaking up into smaller parts and mm -hmm. breaking up into smaller parts and eventually it just becomes this layer of debris circling the planet yeah it's a problem you didn't know we were going to have. At this yeah, point. exactly. <laughs> and if it gets too bad, mm -hmm. we can't launch spaceships anymore because they will get obliterated as they try to go through the debris field. Yeah. It's, it's just crazy. And this picture, did you see this one picture that I had sent? Yeah, I thought that was crazy. It's like half that... an ounce piece of plastic. Oh, did it's that. worse. Here. Take a look. Wow. Here's this tiny little piece of plastic in his hands, and that's the hole that that's it punches scary. right through mm -hmm. this chunk of aluminum. And there's a ton of that floating around already. Yeah, all those little bits and pieces of plastic up there. It doesn't have it's to be metal. doesn't have to be a bullet. It just has to be plastic smashing into things. We yeah. already had one of those plastic pieces break the arm on the space station last mm -hmm. year. Yeah. Um, now, th there's ways around this. We've got both China and the United States have, are testing ways of gathering up stuff, basically using a fishing net as mm -hmm. effectively to yeah. try and gather up a lot of this stuff and suck, maybe hopefully fix this before it gets too bad. Yeah, I saw in one of the articles they were saying that there's so many satellites that are launching that they're thinking it's going to start changing the constellations because we're going to see yeah. the satellites reflecting and we're going to think it's stars. It's crazy. So all of that stuff up there is bound to cause a problem. Yeah. And, and that's also uh, those um, internet satellites that like SpaceX puts up and things like that, those Starlink. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's yeah. causing lots of problems for astronomers already. Mm -hmm. um, as a quick bonus library thing, there's a great book called Seven Eves. It's a fun book. It, I have some disagreements with how it ends, but that's just me. <laughs> um, but it's a story that covers all of this sort of thing where yeah. If the Kessler syndrome takes over and what happens to the planet, um, mm -hmm. what happens with planet Earth? Now, Kessler doesn't do as bad as he as the novel does, but it'll it'll make you think for a moment there on this one. Yeah. It gets I mean, going. Those, those articles kind of got me thinking, like, really, who's in charge up there? Who makes the rules and who enforces them? And then what's the consequence for breaking the rules? Then you that's know? the secret. There is no yeah. one in charge. Mm-hmm. It's just who's, us who's hoping to get take together. That, that responsibility on. I know. Right. <laughs> well, and it should be something like the United Nations, like the United yeah. States and, mm -hmm. you know, China and Russia and the European Union as the big four should mm -hmm. be working together on this and coming up yeah. with solutions because that's what we really need. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, in our world today, it's easier um, said than done. Definitely, 100%. Yeah. And speaking of worldwide things, thank you very much for that segue. <laughs> um, there. Oh, by the way, I'll I'll come back to that one. Um, worldwide, Facebook traffic message. Fa <laughs> half of all of the voice traffic on Facebook Messenger mm -hmm. is all from one country. Yeah. How much voice do you use in your life versus texting? I'm old school, so I like the texting. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm starting to get to the point where I prefer to text rather than talk, because then you have like a record. You can go back and verify and not rely on your memory so much. Steve, you said you were bringing the mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here's yeah, my I like proof, that. I like... Right here. <laughs> yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm you know, I'm on the other side a lot where I do a lot of stuff by voice at home, you know, with you know my echoes and stuff like that, and, and just running yeah. around doing that. And my headphones are all set up that way, so I can just press the button, tell her to do things, play this, mm -hmm. do this, whatever. Yeah. But I didn't think I. I mean, the two weird things about it are one, the lack of a keyboard. Uh, mm -hmm. We're talking about the 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 Khmer people in Cambodia yeah. who regular standard Latin keyboard that you use on your phone right now doesn't work for their language. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's just not quite going to work. It, it, technically, they have some workarounds, especially yeah. on a larger keyboard, but that's not. But then so many of them are just like, no, I actually like talking and leaving short snippets of voicemails instead of text. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I think I'm struggling with my keyboard with only 26 letters, and then you have uh -huh. the second keyboard for all of the punctuation, and I think yeah. they have like 74 characters in 74 language. characters. I couldn't yeah, imagine right. that. I think I would do the voice thing too. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely. And I'm kind of, do you, you have voicemail on your phone? Yeah. See, I don't. I've refused to activate voicemail on my phones. Even oh, wow. my county phone, I don't have voicemail. I mean, technically I do. There's a voicemail. If you call me at my county phone number, it says, yeah. you know, you've reached Bob. I prefer to be reached by email. Please email mm -hmm. me at, and it gives yeah. you my email address so that I'm staying in touch with everyone and making sure that I'm there for anybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I look at my missed call logs a lot for that. Yeah, most people that I know, if they're really calling to talk to me, they don't leave me a voicemail if I don't answer. They text. Yeah. So, you yeah, know, when you I, have I, a voicemail, it's like a solicitor or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm in my wife uses WhatsApp and mm -hmm. almost exclusively for her voice calls now also. Oh, wow. So yeah, yeah. I, it's, it's one of those things. I'm just like, huh, this is an interesting way. I mean, and again, this is why we go out there to some of these other websites around mm -hmm. this one. One of my favorite sites, rest of world. Um, mm -hmm. we've used it several times on the show just to get a different point of view from things than yeah. we're used to seeing. Cause I never considered what the article was about it never even occurred to me that you know someone that spoke a different language needed you know two keyboards to be able to type what they yeah. needed to type and i thought it was interesting that facebook's first assumption was there's a literacy issue as opposed to 
the language doesn't yeah. facilitate texting very well. Yeah, and it highlights one of those issues where you know a lot of these tech mm -hmm. companies are just so, you know, American focused mm -hmm. in yeah. their work groups, even though Americans make up such a small percentage of the people right. actually using their platform. Mm -hmm. we, there's, I think, Facebook's now up to closing in on four billion people using their platform. There's mm -hmm. only 300 million, 350 million people in the United States, period. I mean, there's just yeah. like, you would think you'd be starting to pay attention to what all the rest of these people need and do. Oh, yeah, and or sure. maybe they are and we are in our bubble here not hearing about what they're actually doing to help people. Yeah, that, that may be it because I can't imagine they're they're centering everything around us, like you yeah. said, with so many other people out there. So it would be yeah. interesting to experience Facebook in another country to see how it's different. Yeah, I, I know moderation experience. is really, there was another article that I didn't choose for today's that talked all about moderation in Arabic countries is so horrible because mm -hmm. nobody's even paying attention to those countries and what the people are saying. Ugh. Yeah. Let's talk about a more pleasant topic. <laughs> what happens if you snap your fingers and you can get rid of people? Um, no. Okay, so. Yeah, I, I thought that article was have, awesome. Have you seen, you watched the movies? It just goes to show the power of like little ideas yeah. that turn into these big experiments. I love so that. have you seen, I'm guessing you've seen the movies. I'm not a movie person, yes. so I haven't seen these. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the movie, in the Marvel movies, there's mm -hmm. an, there's a, super villain who gets a gauntlet and he goes snap and he wipes out a whole bunch yeah. of people. Yeah. So two things come out of this. One is that scientists are like, well, no, he can't snap his fingers like that because, <laughs> or, or whatever. And then they start doing some more research on this over these last couple of years. And it turns out that when you snap your fingers, that is the fastest your human body can move is from your thumb as you snap across that middle finger and you mm -hmm. go across. That movement to create the snap is the fastest thing a human body can do. Yeah. It took me some time to process that idea. Cause yeah. I was like, really? Like it's, it's that? And then I, I kind of like, started huh. to get it. Yeah. Kind of yep, weird, I agree. I'm like, huh. Caused a and lot then, of trouble with that little snap. <laughs> yes. And then the other idea about this is how are we going to be using the metaverse? How are you going to be using mm -hmm. VR and doing things? Yeah. And they've created their own gauntlet now. They're not mm -hmm. calling it that, but they're creating something. And how I actually found this article a third time this week. So I was like, okay, it's it's meant to be. I have to show you this. To, to talk about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. was because they were talking about the idea that can you snap in the gauntlet? Mm -hmm. That you will know you have good, high quality VR, ob VR capable, haptic feedback is what it's officially called. Mm -hmm. And you're all used to haptic feedback out there. I mean, you've typed on your phone, right? And you felt those yeah. keys as you're typing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you didn't feel anything. It's a flat piece of glass. Yeah. It's you've think you felt something because they're using a little electrodes, electromatic, um, oh, I just lost the, the extra word that I'm missing there, um, that you go ahead and when, as you're typing and it feels to your fingers like you're actually doing something. Mm -hmm. um, same thing with these gloves. It's But instead of using physical hard servos, servo, wow, my words today are just not here, <laughs> huh? The servos that are in the glove are all mm -hmm. air bladders instead of physical devices. Mm -hmm. So they can make them go. And right now they're up to 15 per finger and wow. they're getting more and more and more of them. This kind of reminds me of the book, Ready Player One, uh -huh. where he yep. would put on the full haptic suit. Yes. And then it makes me think like, how much did they have to really like develop the technology to have this fully immersive suit in this video game? And it's cool that we're on the verge of yeah. that. Yeah, 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 we really are. Um, this is something that I've been talking about in our virtual reality classes for the last six years, you know, back in 2015 mm -hmm. when we first started teaching them. Um, 
And I will say the same thing I've always said in those classes. This is the way we can really become immersed in VR and the library is not going to get a glove. <laughs> yeah, because I saw it's going to take like a special 3D knitting device to be able to customize it for each Well, person. not only that, but okay, Sarah, here, here's this glove. By the way, the library doesn't have washing machines. Would you like to put this on? <laughs> Exactly. Just put on this glove that somebody <laughs> else was wearing. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's going to be an interesting concept in the future for us to figure out how are we going to pull this off. But again, like you said, this is going to be one of those things that we definitely, everybody feels like it's about to happen and yeah. it's going to come. And man, when touch is there, we already have sound, we already have sight, yeah. we already have kind of getting in touch now mm -hmm. and when they perfect that artificial tongue that is amazing which yeah. they've been working on mm -hmm. that if you haven't seen that before just wait till they can send in whatever you want and really? that's when we get to, oh yeah 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 no there's some researchers in, in, at stanford that have been working on an artificial tongue uh little sensors that you click onto your tongue and then they can simulate mm -hmm. you getting different di they can stimulate different taste buds Oh, so wow. it makes you think that you're tasting something. Mm -hmm. And I've said, once these things are in the general public, that's yeah. when we will find out what the metaverse is really like. Because you've got some teenager out there right now or some middle schooler right now who, as he's a teenager, gets to play with this kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. what do you do when you can send the color blue to your tongue or yeah. make your eyes or make your your glove feel like it's on fire and your hand is actually burning. I mean, what, what are we going to do? How are those ideas going to flow out of people for different types of, of all sorts of crazy ideas, you know, yeah. new, new types of fiction, new types of games, new types of everything. It's going to be a really fun future. If we can just live through the satellite problem and get there, huh? I just hope we can make it through that satellite thing. Yeah, it, it kind of makes me a little worried because once we're able to be fully immersed, uh -huh. what happened in Ready Player One where everybody was just in their pod and they interact through this immersive technology, they're yeah. not going to interact in real life. Like even the main character, he had you know, the, the highest tech of the highest tech and it would like exercise him and it this stuff because he was just in there all the yep. time yep 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 it is it's one of those things where i think people um we've talked about this a couple times on the show it's it's where people are thinking about their direction they want to go in it is it, it's going to be people making this so if everyone thinks it's going to be horrible then yeah you're probably going to end up with a horrible thing but as long as we get people working on this who want it to be a good thing who want it to be inclusive for everybody then we stand a chance hopefully right yeah be positive for me sarah come on we have um, a chance i'm trying to be positive i think it has a really really good potential for okay good thank you thank you to help people. i i i tend to be on the the more pollyannish happy side yeah. of things like it's gonna work out somehow yeah. i know it will i just don't know how yet but we're going to make it work. I'm just going to yeah. drag everybody kicking and screaming open to the, the future. the doors for a lot of different people that maybe can't be out and about with people and yeah. give them an opportunity to interact and not be so lonely and, and on their own. Yeah. I think it's 100%. Be good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Sarah, for being here this week. Um, you brought a really cool thing for libraries. Let me sh go and share that up uh, while you tell us about it. So Artlet is coming up in January. And what yes. are all the libraries doing? All of the libraries um, are busy setting up their displays. We're going to be giving out little packs of chalk and families can design their own artwork and they can submit their digital, they can submit their artwork digitally. And then the libraries are going to pick, you know, various people's artwork to be featured at Artlet which is very cool. We set up our table today. We've already given out, I think, two or three sets. And Excellent. we saw kids in the library coloring. And it was it was nice to, to get back to that. Very cool. Are they doing it outside at Hollywood? 
Yeah, um, they're they're not. They were. We give them little pieces of cardstock, and they're sitting okay. at the tables. And okay. it's nice because we haven't really had that in a while. Yeah. And it's nice to see, you know, the people coloring and drawing, and the kids doing their little artwork. And we saw some of the moms taking pictures to submit it. So I'm really excited nice. about that. Excellent. Yes. I was going to say, you know, if they're doing it outside on the sidewalks, and you mentioned the rain earlier, I think yes. we'll get to. Take some quick pictures for, for yes, that stuff exactly. beforehand. Definitely. But yeah, and it is at all libraries around the whole system. So yes. whatever library you're at, please show up. You can get your chalk. There's codes on the boxes of chalk, I think. Yes, there's QR codes that they can scan to submit their stuff digitally. Um, they can either do it in the library or take it home with them and submit it. And then make sure to go to Artlet and check out the cool stuff. I went a couple of years ago and it's very, very fun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot mm -hmm. of fun. We'll be doing some. Yeah. We'll be doing some interesting stuff there with uh, either augmented reality or virtual reality as part of the drawing program too with people. So, very you know, cool. It's, it's always a fun event out there up in the yes. Pompano, working with the city of Pompano uh, mm -hmm. and the Pompano Library. So it's a great experience for everybody to come up to in January, and yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun. Man, mm -hmm. Well, we all. I am okay. See, we're just carrying on here, Sarah. I got to cut us off because we're going to just run us uh -oh. way too far over here. Um, let me throw up our final slide real quick. Thank you so much, Sarah, for being here today. Thank and you. And as always, if you have your favorite librarian or library you want to see featured, grab us, creationstation at Broward.org, and we'll see everybody next week. As a word of caution, next week, because of Thanksgiving, we're going to be recording on Wednesday instead. We'll see you all then. Have a great day. Awesome. Thank you.